Good morning, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. Hello, hi. Say hello, baby. Hello. <laughs> before we get to this video, we want to give an update on my wife's uh, situation. But before we do that, I want to um, please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures to Psalm 63. Psalm 63, please follow me, uh, follow me along. O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see thy power and thy glory, so as I, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Because thy loving kindness is better than life. And uh, we are saved by grace through faith. And salvation is a gift given unto us. Thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness. And my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches. Because thou hast been my help. Oh, amen. We can definitely attest to that, can't we, baby? Mm -hmm. Because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. But those that seek my soul, like the Jesuits and all these uh, witch doctors and stuff like that, to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for foxes. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone that sweareth by him shall glory. But the mouth of them that speak lies shall be stopped. First and foremost, brethren, Church of the Living God, thank you so much to all of you who have um, uh, given encouragement, who are praying for us, for my wife. For those of you via email <laughs> that have given us much recommendations, thank you for those recommendations. Thank you so very, very much. Baby? Thank you, everybody. Thank you for um, everybody's prayers. They're very much appreciated. Thank you very much. And thank you. Thank you for all the advice you've given us. And um, I feel much better. And I pray, I just thank you. Thank you so much. She looks beautiful too, by the way. She looks very beautiful, by the way. But uh, my wife just wanted to personally address you. Uh, one moment, brethren. Uh, hello again, brother. <laughs> Sorry, my, my wife just left. Yeah, about about all of that, um, the Lord really made made his will known unto us. Um, we initially thought, it's like, okay, let's look into health insurance. And we looked into Medicare and Medicaid and Blue Cross Blue Shield, which was a joke. And every single one, the Lord, boom, boom. Boom, shut it down, shut it down. And what I found really interesting about all of that too was all these um, agencies like Medicare, Medicaid, and Blue Cross Blue Shield, they, everyone we talked to, the volume was very quiet so you could hardly hear them. Uh, that's, that's not a coincidence, by the way. They, they do that purposely. Um, yeah, we found that very interesting. And then, okay, that, the Lord clearly, it's like, boom, shut every single one down uh, on the health insurance thing. It's like, okay, okay, we, we considered that. Then we, um, we because uh, we were, you know, making phone calls and we were on speakerphone, so it was my wife and I speaking to these people. And we got a hold of a doctor. A doctor that my wife used to go to before all this um, psychological Jesuit created uh, propaganda nonsense started. Um, she called up a doctor and um, 
uh, tentatively set an appointment, which is canceled. Um, and my wife was talking to them, and uh, they right away asked about our insurance, and we don't, and we said we don't have insurance. Right away, the the one lady that we speak with, it's like, oh, oh, you don't have insurance. Well, because, see, through the insurance companies, that's how all these people make all their millions, through the insurance company. But uh, anyway, the lady, her, her, um, her tone of voice just changed with us and started talking down to us a little bit. It's like, you know, well, we're going to need $250 up front. Yada, yada. It's like, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So she had a nurse call us back. And then this nurse, the uh, very, very first thing, it's like, she's like, uh, well, you're not an insured and uh, you're between insurance right now. It's like, lady, we're not going to get insurance, okay? Uh, the Lord shut that down right away, okay? He's like, boom, boom, boom. It's like, you guys aren't doing that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And, of course, right away, she was, again, you know, we need $250 up front since you're self-paid. Blah, 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 blah. It's like, okay, lady, let's talk about the symptoms. And so my wife started explaining some of the symptoms that were going on with her. And uh, then the, midway through that, then this lady started asking questions about the poison crown. Do you have headaches? Do you have... Um, eye strain? Do you breathe? Uh, do you blink? Okay, do you do this, this, this? Every, you know, every normal kind of thing for anybody who might have a cold or something like that. Um, so she rattled off all this stuff and it's like, no, no, no. And then we, you know, we mentioned to her that my wife has um, some diarrhea. Okay, thank your pardon for that. And then this lady on the other line said, well, that is also a sign of the poison crown. <laughs> like, really? Really? So what, you know, remember the nonsensical asymptomatic stuff, right? Remember that? Yeah. So um, I was starting to get really irritated. <laughs> so, okay, next thing you know, this lady, like I said, this lady is going to say, well, breathing. Blinking, walking, talking. Those are all signs of the poison crown. Uh, needless to say, dear brethren, needless to say, we are not going to be going to a doctor. Uh, like, like we have acknowledged, thank you. Thank you to all of you who have prayed for us and who are praying for us, uh, many of you who, many of you who I've never even heard of, um, came came and uh, wished us well. Thank you to every single one of you. Thank you for that. Um, many of you gave some really good suggestions, and um, also there is a beloved sister, a friend of ours, um, who is also very knowledgeable in um, health um, as far as natural health. Um, gave many good recommendations on to my wife, your sister. Um, thank you, sister. We love you. Um, which was also, like I said, very, very helpful. But we're not going to be going to a doctor. We are going to put, we are in the Lord's hands. We are in the hands of God. Um, we really are. And the same sister brought up a good point yesterday. But we have to remember, um, before the psychological operation known as um, the Poison Crown, which was created by the Jesuit Order, started, before this all started, you could go to a doctor uh, reasonably without having any fear. I mean, there were obviously there were many things to be concerned with, yes, but it was different before the Poison Crown Psychological Operation was instituted. But now that the Poison Crown Psychological Operation has now been instituted here in America for at least a year, and everyone apparently within the medical community was required to get the steel of the Jesuit poniard, 
It's different. We truly cannot trust the medical establishment. Because right away, too, that lady, she started asking us this, 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 this about, you know, have you had these symptoms, these symptoms? Well, they're all symptoms of the poison crown. It's like, shut up. Shut up. Okay. That being said, we are not going to go to a doctor, but um, seek um, herbs, supplements, um, change of diet, fasting, and um, lots of prayer. Lots of prayer. Brethren, the medical establishment, the pharmacia, the witch doctors, the sorcerers, the druggists, the poisoners, these are the people that are going to be, uh, during the time of Jacob's trouble, that are going to be um, delivering the mark of the beast. Okay? These are the same people. The mark of the beast system is being set up right before our eyes. Now, the church of the living God is still here, but the mark of the beast system is being set up before our eyes. It really is. We can't trust the medical establishment. They're all, it's controlled by the Jesuits, okay? Uh, number one. Uh, and number two, um, because the Jesuit order <laughs> does know who I am. They find out that they have my wife in their care. You see what I'm saying? So yes, again, we are not going to the doctor. We are not going that route. We are going to seek the Lord. Uh, many of you have had many good recommendations. Um, several of you um, rep uh, mentioned leaves. Um, uh, this goy, uh, um, soursop leaf. Thank you to you who recommended that. That's coming. And also this Pau de Arco bark stuff was also a recommendation. And also uh, elk glutathione, um, the appropriate dosage on that. Um, there are many things that we have looked into. And of course, change of diet and fasting and whatnot. We're, we're, we're going to seek the Lord because, you know, the cures are out there. Okay, the cures are out there. And if you go to the medical establishment, they're witch doctors, they're sorcerers. Their goal is not to cure you. Their goal is to get you onto the pharmacia, the poison. Okay, that is their goal. And since we are, we are not going to receive the steel of the Jesuit poniard, um, they would use the uh, dictates of the papal interdict against us. And plus, they'd want to shove that thing up my wife's nose. And I would get physical with someone if they tried to do that to my wife. I would. I would. I would have to. It's like, you're not touching my wife. Yes, we are. Oh, you think so, huh, buddy? You know, I would. To defend my wife? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And any of you of the Church of the Living God who is married and has a wife, speaking on the men, of course, uh, you would do the same. You would do the same. Okay. We're not supposed to be doormats especially right now. And whereas before all this start uh, before all this started, okay, then maybe, yes, okay, then we would have been like a little bit more, okay, let's go to a doctor. Save up, praise the Lord and go to a doctor. Today right now That's the times we live in, brethren. We have to be dependent upon the Lord, not dependent on man. Thank you to every one of you who, um, again, who, um, who offered, who have been praying. Please continue to pray for us. Uh, we're not. This is far from over, far from over. But um, since there has been uh, some rapid changes 
and diet and we've been doing things more smartly um, or wisely I should say um, little baby steps little things have been um, improving so thank you God answers prayer thank you thank you so very much to every single one of you thank you it's going to email each and every one of you but that would take a long time <laughs> thank you you know who you are thank you thank you so very much like I said the mark of the beast system is being set up before our eyes and a brother recently now we're shifting into the main video <laughs> A brother recently um, asked me a very good question about Judas. Is Judas going to be the son of perdition? Hmm. It's a very interesting question. Very, very interesting, interesting question. One of those, another one of them coincidences, <laughs> which happened quite a bit. First, let's establish them, some things. Get your authorized version of the scriptures and turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Jeremiah chapter 50. Jeremiah chapter 50. Verses 9 on to verse 16. Okay? Jeremiah 50. Verses 9 on to verse 16. Please follow me along, and I'm going to address you, as though you are, okay? Jeremiah chapter 50, verses 9 on to verse 16, speaking about the nation of Babylon, the nation of Babylon that was once headed by King Nebuchadnezzar, okay? For lo, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the north country, and they shall set themselves in array against her. From thence shall she be taken. Their arrows shall be as a mighty expert man. None shall return in vain. And Chaldea shall be a spoil. All that spoil her shall be satisfied, said the Lord. Because ye were glad, because ye rejoiced, O ye destroyers of mine heritage, who are the destroyers of our Lord's heritage? The Jews. Uh, that would be Roman Catholicism. Mystery Babylon the Great. The mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And her army, the Jesuit order. It's Rome. It's the Catholics that are the destroyers of God's heritage. The Jew. Okay? Because ye are grown fat as the heifer at grass, and bellow as bulls. During all this psychological operation that uh, being instituted by the Jesuits, the Vatican, uh, Vatican is just getting loads of money from it. The Vatican, Roman Catholicism, the richest institution on earth. Okay? Your mother shall be sore confounded. She that bear you shall be ashamed. Behold, the hindermost of the nation shall be a wilderness, a dry land and a desert. Because of the wrath of the Lord, it shall not be inhabited. But it shall be wholly desolate. Everyone that goeth by Babylon shall be astonished and hiss at all her plagues. During the, the reign of Saddam Hussein, um, I have not found it, but I do remember, um, some of you will remember, that one of the things Saddam Hussein was doing, he was seeking to rebuild ancient Babylon. And I do remember that uh, Saddam Hussein had coins made with the image of Nebuchadnezzar and himself on it. Saddam Hussein, if one of you can find any information, my, our dearly, dearly beloved sister, <laughs> um, if any of you can find any information pertinent to that, email it to me because for some reason YouTube really doesn't like people putting links on my videos. 
<laughs> for some reason. But um, put it in the comments section about that, about how um, uh, Saddam Hussein, Hussein sought to rebuild uh, ancient Babylon and the coin thing. But it says here, Because of the wrath of the Lord it shall not be inhabited, but it shall be wholly desolate. Everyone that goeth by Babylon shall be astonished and, hi and hiss at all her plagues. And, by the way, the videos that the Lord has given me to do, sorry for that. This is not mine. <laughs> Forgive me for saying that. I repent. Forgive me for saying that. Put yourselves in array against Babylon round about. All ye that bend the bow, shoot at her. Spare no arrows, for she has sinned against the Lord. Shout against her round about. She hath given her hand. Her foundations are fallen. Her walls are thrown down. For it is the vengeance of the Lord. Take vengeance upon her, as she hath done do unto her. Cut off the sower from Babylon, and him that handleth the sickle in the time of harvest. For fear of the oppressing sword, they shall turn every one to his people. And they shall flee, every one to his own land. Now, those of you Catholics will say, be quick to point out, that this, what is specifically being talked about in the book of Jeremiah, already happened with the judgment against ancient Babylon. And you would be correct. You would be correct. Yes, this did. This did happen. Babylon, ancient Babylon, got its just rewards. It sure did. But to, to limit this as just of something that has already happened and not looking forward to future prophecy? Hmm. Hmm. And, and let's read, let's skip a little bit now on to verses 31 on to verse 40 in Jeremiah chapter 50, okay? Jeremiah 50 verses 31 now on to verse 40. Behold, I am against thee, O thou most proud, you Roman Catholics, you Jesuit, you scum Jesuits. Huh? Remember, Roman Catholicism is Satan's church. And Satan's church's army, Roman Catholicism, is the Jesuit order. The scum. If you're a Catholic, you are not saved. You're a mere Christian. You are not saved. Okay? Behold, I am against thee, O thou most proud, saith the Lord God of hosts. For thy day is come, the time that I will visit thee. And the most proud shall stumble and fall, and none shall raise him up. And I will kindle a fire in his cities, and it shall devour all round about him. Future judgment against Roman Catholicism. The, uh, verses 9 on verse 16, yes, ancient Babylon met its match. Yes, it did. But that is not all this is limited on to, brethren. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. Roman Catholicism, her time is coming. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. And all that took them captives held them fast. They refused to let them go. Their Redeemer is strong. Note the capital R on that Redeemer. The Lord of hosts is his name. He shall thoroughly plead their cause, that he may give rest to the land and disquiet the inhabitants of Babylon. Future prophecy, you Catholics going to have a hard time coming in the very near future. Very hard time. A sword is upon the Chaldeans, saith the Lord, and upon the inhabitants of Babylon, and upon her princes, and upon her wise men. A sword is upon the liars, and they shall dote. A sword is upon her mighty men, and they shall, and they shall be dismayed. The history for Roman Catholicism? 
You know, they're going to be reinstituting the Dark Ages when Roman Catholicism ruled over in Egypt. Or in Egypt. <laughs> in Europe. Okay? It's going to be a return to the Dark Ages. The New World Order is not a new thing. It is a return to the Dark Ages when Roman Catholicism ruled. Okay? A sword is upon their horses and upon their chariots and upon all the mingled people that are in the midst of her. Mingled people! And they shall become as women. A sword is upon her treasures. And they shall be robbed. All the millions. The Vatican millions or billions, I should say. Okay? Well, look at that verse. A sword. There's going to be coming a, a sword out of the mouth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, he'll speak his word and destroy the enemy. Yes, yes, yes. A sword is upon their horses and upon their chariots. Uh, Roman Catholicism's destruction is prophesied and it will come. This is, you know, that's, that's why these uh, devils and these coadjutors are so feverish right now. Because they know they have a short time. And upon all the mingled people that are in the midst of her, bringing everybody together, ecumenicalism. Okay? Remember, Roman Catholicism, it, in their own teachings, Refer to the dispersion at the Tower of Babel as the error of Babel. God dispersed them. Because everybody got together. What did they do? They started making towers to make themselves a name. To be like the Most High. Okay? Bringing everybody together. God is not for that. God is a God of distinction. Of separation. That's what the scriptures teach. Okay? But the mingled people, bringing everybody together under the head of Rome, okay? Our God is a God of distinction, people. Get over it. Our God is a God of separation. Be ye separate, saith the Lord. Be ye other, holy, okay? Not like that. And definitely not yoked up with the Vatican, okay? Okay? And they shall become as women. A sword is upon her, her treasures, and they shall be robbed. And women nowadays with that toxic feminism, eh, no, they're going to be cowards. They're going to be frightful women. This is what you have to look forward to, Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> it's not looking good for you. A drought is upon her waters. And remember, and we're going to look at Revelation 17. Remember, waters are likened unto people. In, uh, not all the time, it's defined by the context. But a lot of the times you'll see waters, they're referencing to people. Again, that's defined by the context, okay, you silly Canadian. Okay? <laughs> so... A drought is upon her waters, and they shall be dried up, for it is the land of graven images, and they are mad upon their idols. Uh, any doubt that this applies for Roman Catholicism today as well, as it was of old? Therefore the wild beasts of the desert with the wild beasts of the islands shall dwell there, and the owl shall dwell therein, and it shall be no more inhabited forever, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. As God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and the neighbor cities thereof, saith the Lord, so shall no man abide there, neither shall any son of man dwell therein. Hmm... The warnings against Babylon. Now go to Revelation chapter 17. Revelation chapter 17. 
Brad, what does this have to do with the son of perdition and Judas? What we have to establish for those who do not know, brethren, uh, we have to establish who the enemy is. The enemy is Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, Roman Catholicism, and her army, the Jesuit Order. And those of the Jesuit Order, her, her multitude of Jesuit coadjutors who work for the Vatican, who are either Jesuits themselves or are taking orders from the Vatican, here on YouTube and in other platforms, okay, you need to be aware, aware of who the enemy is, okay? That's why we're going through this. This is going to be a little tedious for you. I hope you can bear with it. Revelation chapter 17. We're going to read this whole chapter. <gasps> oh, boy. Revelation chapter 17. Now, think about this. Remember, I personally believe now, I, I didn't always think this. I was corrected. There was a time when I once thought that the book of Revelation was not in chronological order. Um, I, I was wrong in thinking that, okay? I, I totally believe that the book of Revelation is in exact chronological order. I do believe that. I do, I do truly believe that. But we, the Church of the Living God, are not on the earth during the time of Jacob's trouble. We get uh, called up, caught up in Revelation chapter 4, I believe that is. Or is it 3? No, it's 4. In Revelation chapter 4, uh, verse 1. That's when we, the church of the living God, get caught up. Okay? So, this does not pertain unto us. This is written for us. But it's not written to us. Okay? This is for another generation. This is for people that are going to be going through this time period. Not for us. Church of the living God, because we're going to be redeemed. Okay, let's continue this. Revelation chapter 17. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Keeping in mind what we just looked at in Jeremiah. Yes, ancient Babylon met with its faith. With its faith, yes. With its faith. And also its fate. <laughs> Beg your pardon. But to just exclude it for just that and not also pertaining on to future prophecy? It's not wise, dear friend. Let's continue. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication... And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Names of blasphemy. More, Mormon, Moronism. <laughs> Jehovahism, Islam, who knows? And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color. Okay? The, uh, what is it? The bishops and the cardinals. The true colors of Roman Catholicism, uh, Catholicism are purple and scarlet. You look at the, uh, the cardinals, the bishops. It's purple and scarlet. You might be saying, well, no, the Vatican's colors are white and gold. But Mystery Babylon's colors, which Roman Catholicism is, is purple and scarlet. You see it in the processions of the cardinals and bishops. And decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of, of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Over history, read Fox's Book of Martyrs. The people uh, of the Church of the Living God uh, and just in general that the Vatican have murdered 
is in the millions, including both World War I and World War II. Uh, the Vatican, Roman Catholicism, the Jesuits, Satan, the murderers. Okay? The murderers. They're drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. You look into the Croatian Eustachy of old. The Eustachy. You know, uh, that book, uh, The Vatican Holocaust, which I really wish I could get a hold of that one. Uh, to get a copy, a brand new copy of that, is almost up to a thousand dollars. No, thank you. <laughs> you know, but um, you look up some of this Ustachi stuff, man. The Ustachi, the uh, Croatian Ustachi, I believe it was Croatia. If I'm wrong, correct me, somebody. They, their atrocities made uh, the SS blush. They made even the 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 SS the Guys who were doing that stuff in the uh, concentration camps being like, wow, you guys are pretty brutal. Verse 7. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman, and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was, and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When they beheld the beast that was and is not and yet is. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. The original papal chair in Rome, they've moved it, obviously. Look into that yourself. But Rome was known as the city. Um, and here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Rome was the city, was the city on seven mountains or on seven hills. Okay, you can look that up on your own time right there. Verse six or verse nine there is uh, telling you who this mystery Babylon is. It's Roman Catholicism, people. Okay, let's continue. And there are seven kings; five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast, the destruction of uh, Babylon, Roman Catholicism. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them, for he is lord of lords and king of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And he saith unto me, right here, verse 15, The waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And you look at this today. Nations bowing at the head of the white pope, Pope Francis, who is a Jesuit, who is subservient unto Sosa, the head of Catholicism. Okay? But nations going to seek the audience of the Pope? All, uh, all roads lead to Rome, people. Okay? And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore. And shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree, and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God should be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. And it's not Jerusalem, it's not the Jews. It's Rome. It's the Catholics. 
It's the Jesuit order. It's the black pope with his puppet boy, Francis. Okay. Revelation chapter 17 is specifically describing Roman Catholicism. Okay. And that man of sin, the son of perdition, for a time, is going to be heading that system, Roman Catholicism. Now let's read uh, Revelation 18, verses 1 on to verse 10. Okay? And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having, a, having great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried my, mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great has fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. And the third person of the satanic trinity is a bird. No coincidence there. Let's continue. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Isn't that not happening today? All roads are leading on to Rome. All the nations seeking Rome, the Pope. Okay? The Jesuits are, are in control of all the big things out there, brethren. They are. They are. The Jesuits are in control of everything. They're being allowed to be in control by our Lord Jesus Christ for judgment upon this earth. It's Rome that rules the world right now. And once we, the Church of the Living God, get out of here, there's not going to be any restraint for them to do as they will until our Lord come back at his second coming. And that's it. Let's continue. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. In the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. All you Jesuits, all you Catholics, all you disgusting coadjutors here on YouTube who are working for the Vatican or are either Jesuits yourselves, you're going to pay for what you have done. You are not going to escape God's judgment. You are going to pay for what you have done. Hmm. That's why you're living it up right now. That's why right now is so important to all of you. Because your end is prophesied for you. And see, you guys know it. That's why they're so feverish right now, brethren. How much, has she, how much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I said the queen, the queen of heaven, you know, the Roman Catholic Mary. Here, let me offend some of you Catholics. You, to your Roman Catholic Mary. <clears throat> oh, yeah. See, you're, you're Mary Catholic. It's not the Mary of the scriptures. Your Mary is the Queen of Heaven, Diana of the Ephesians, uh, Semiramis. Okay? I said the Queen, and am no widow. I shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine. And she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, 
For in one hour is thy judgment come. Your destruction is going to come like that. Again, brethren, that's why they are so feverish right now. Because our time, the church of the living God, is ending. When we're going to get caught up, redeemed, I don't know. I personally don't believe we're going to make it 10 years. And I kind of am under the impression that uh, we might be here for a couple more years. But we're, 10 more years? I don't think so. Because when you look at Agenda 2030, how could that, how could, beg your pardon, how could Agenda 2030 happen if the church of the living God were on the earth? Doesn't make sense. But uh, uh, look at this. Uh, look in here at verse 4 in Revelation 18. I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Timing Jacob's trouble. Okay? And this is also, go to 2 Corinthians now, chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Come out of her, my people. Dispensation of the... Of, uh, Time of Jacob's trouble. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 17 and 18. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Touch not the unclean thing. Touch not the unclean thing. Okay? And I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Come out from among them. Okay? Dispensation that we are currently in. The time of the Gentiles. Isaiah. Isaiah. What is that? Isaiah chapter 52. Isaiah chapter 52. Under the law. Dispensation under the law. Isaiah chapter 52. Verse, uh, verse 11. Verse 11. Okay. Verses 11 and 12 in Isaiah chapter 52. Depart ye, depart ye. Go ye out from thence. Touch no unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of her be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord for ye shall not go out with haste nor go by flight for the Lord will go before you and the God of Israel will be your re reward so during the law after the law and during the time of Jacob's trouble three different dispensations come out get out get out you're a new creature. You're not supposed to have anything to do with that. Three different dispensations. Don't let any of these uh, Jesuit coadjutors um, tell you that being a new creature is not something that happens. See, they're, they're, uh, these uh, coadjutors, easy believers and devils, they're all against being a new creature because they are not new creatures themselves. They're against it because they're not it themselves. And our Lord tells us to be separate than that, where they want you to indulge in that. See. Now go to Daniel. So, the system, the religion that's coming, it's all Roman Catholicism, okay? Roman Catholicism. After we, the Church of the Living God, are redeemed, resurrected, caught up, they are going to rule the roost. Because we are here, they cannot uh, go forth with all their plans. But once we get caught up, all you people are going to really see some, <laughs> some dramatic things happening before your eyes. And see, all of this that is happening today is preparing you 
to take that mark of the beast. Okay? And once you take, and we're going to look at this, once you take that mark of the beast, you're damned to go to hell. Okay? Because the mark of the beast um, has, and what is that thing called? And I have a, the video on my channel here, on the channel here, excuse me. Um, the VMAT2 inhibitors, known as the FunVax, okay? You're seeing it's uh, implemented today, okay? Uh, once we are gone, I believe it's going to be more highly refined, okay? Because the steel of the Jesuit Punyard is not the mark of the beast, okay? Um, someone who has taken the steel of the Jesuit Punyard, um, the FunVax is in there, but you can still get saved. Once we're gone and the mark of the beast is implemented, Nope. Nope. Not at all. Hmm, not at all, buddy. And all this is preparing you for that. And see, there's going to be coming. See, everybody right now is looking for a Savior. They don't want the true Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. No, they're looking to, uh, to a foolish shepherd. We're going to look at that too. But what's going to happen is a man is going to appear after we are gone. And this man is going to be a ruler. Who is this man? Daniel chapter 11. Daniel chapter 11. Verses 20 on to verse 27. We're going to, we're going to read from verses 20 on to the close of the chapter in Daniel chapter 11. But we're going to break certain things up for us, okay? Daniel chapter 11. We will be begin by reading verses 20 on to verse 27. Then shall stand up in his estate a raiser of taxes in the glory of the kingdom. But within few days he shall be destroyed neither in anger nor in battle. And in his estate shall stand up a vile person in whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. And with the arms of a flood, the waters were likened unto peoples, nations, and tongues. Okay? And with the arms of a flood shall they be overflown from before him, and shall be broken, yea, also the prince of the covenant. And after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully, for he shall come up and shall become strong with a small people. Small people like the Jesuit order. Like the Jesuit order. Is this referring unto the Jesuit order? I think so. Makes sense, doesn't it? Let's continue. He shall enter peaceably, even upon the fattest places of the provenance. Peaceably. Okay? Because there's going to be so much devastation, destruction. Okay? He's going to come in peaceably, offering peace, while going forth conquering and to conquer. Okay? But anyway, through peace, he's going to destroy many, offering peace to people by getting rid of who? I believe the sons of Ishmael, the Muslims. Okay? And isn't it, isn't it interesting right now, Afghanistan, the Taliban thing, there are Muslims, Ishmael. We're seeing scripture, uh, we're seeing prophecy being fulfilled right before our eyes, people. Okay? And he shall do that which his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers. He shall scatter among them the prey, and spoil and riches, yea. And he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds, even for time. Even for a time. Look at that verse. That's very important to note. There are these nitwits out there, and I'm using charity when I say that, who say that the first three and a half years of the time of Jacob's trouble is going to be peaceful. <laughs> an idiot is someone who is void of logic and reason. You're an idiot if you believe that. 
You're an idiot if you believe that. I know a lot of these easy believism heretics also preach that, that the first three years are going to be peaceful. While he's going forth conquering and to conquer uh, wars and rumors of wars, devastation, hello? Have you ever read the book of Revelation there, genius? Huh? No. No, it's not going to be a peaceful time. Okay? He's going to, through peace, destroy many. Okay? But look at this verse. That man of sin, the son of perdition, okay? He's going to come in initially as seeming to be a friend of the Jews. Why? And he shall do that which his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers. Now, there are those out there who erroneously believe that the father's there. And I understand, but it ain't right. We'll look at, we're going to look at that a little later. Uh, they will say that the father's there is referring unto like priests. No, 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 no. Uh, the Jews, the Hebrews, they will not accept a Gentile Mashiach. It's not going to happen. That man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to be a Jew. Is he going to be a half-breed, you know, half-Gentile, half-Jew? I don't know. It's possible. But regardless, the Jews will not accept a Gentile Mashiach, Messiah. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So this man of sin, the son of perdition, he's going to be Jewish. Okay? Is he going to be a half-breed, half-Jew, half-Gentile? Maybe. But at the least, we know that he is going to be a majority of the Hebrew. Okay? His fathers nor his father's fathers. Okay? And the dividing here, he shall scatter among them the prey, the riches from the Muslim nations, to make it look good. Okay? Think about it. These easy believism devils, the Jesuit coadjutors here, they're not going to be the ones that they are going to go after during the time of Jacob's trouble. I'll be honest with you, I'm going to let a little something out. Okay? Um, I am being persuaded that we know in the book of Revelation, uh, during the first couple of years of the time of Jacob's trouble, like right away, there's going to be a great multitude of people who will be saved and murdered by that man of sin, the son of perdition, by Roman Catholicism, okay? We know that. Uh, that's in Revelation chapter 7, okay? We're not going to be looking at that today, okay? But we know that. There's going to be a great multitude saved and killed, okay? Here's what I'm believing. See, those of you who are going to be left behind because you're falling for these Jesuit coadjutors, uh, easy believism devils like Mr. Smiley up in Canada, okay, these guys, um, once we get caught up and you guys realize that those coadjutor Jesuit devils were lying to you, um, those of you who are left behind who fell for easy believism, maybe you are the ones who will be like, whoa, whoa, the, the, those, the guys who they, they were telling us uh, that repentance, uh, these uh, easy believism guys, they were saying, all oh, those guys, they're Denlingerites, remember? They're, they're works of salvation, backloading works and salvation. Just believe, just believe, okay? Those people are going to realize, like, whoa, they're the ones who are lying to you. Not us who preach to you repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ, coming to him broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, calling upon the name of the Lord, which all these devil coadjutors preach against. Okay? Those who are left behind of that denomination of easy believism, what if they're the ones who realize, wake up, it's like, oh, wow. They, and they come out, start coming out. It's like, hey, those are liars. That, that, that's that man of sin, the son of perdition. Could be wrong, but I'm being persuaded. Uh, that that's a very good possibility, because see, you idiot devils, uh, 
The people that you're pulling the wool over their eyes, you know, touching on their pride, uh, letting them, you know, telling them it's okay for them to live in sin, okay? Once we're out of here, everything changes. Just like with the flood, you know, how the atmosphere changed, you know, like that, you know, and then uh, Noah got uh, drunk from being, uh, from his wine because things fermented faster, okay? Things are going to change. The atmosphere of everything is going to change dramatically after we, the church of the living God, are resurrected and you got all these devils left behind telling you to take the mark of the beast. Just believe. Some of those people are going to wake up, brethren. I truly believe that. And I truly, I'm being persuaded that once these guys wake up and realize that these easy believism devils were lying to them all along. How are you guys, you devil coadjutors, after we're out of here and the evidence that we were not lying to them, you are, how are you going to try, how are you going to convince these people that it's just believe after all the, I don't get it. I don't get it. But that's what I believe. That's what I believe. Let's continue, okay? Looking at verse 24 again, but. He's going to distribute the spoils of war onto the Jews, that man of sin, the son of perdition. Because he's going to, one, number one, be Jewish. Number two, he's going to be coming in uh, with flatteries peacefully, looking for the Jews, you know, looking to make himself well-liked among the Jews so they can build, rebuild their third temple, which I believe could be brought, uh, built in no time flat. Okay? So he's like, here, look, all the spoil of the, the Muslims and oh, all these people uh, who, are, who are saying this about me, don't believe them. They're, they're out of the way. They're out of the way. Don't worry about them. Don't worry about them. Okay? Verse 25. And he shall stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south with a great army. And the king of the south shall be stirred up to battle with a very great and mighty army. But he shall not stand. For they shall forecast devices against him. Yea, they that feed of the portion of his meat shall destroy him. And his army shall overflow. And many shall fall down slain. And both these kings' hearts shall be to do mischief. And they shall speak lies at one table. But it shall not prosper. For yet the time, for yet the end shall be at the time appointed. Hold your place here and go to First Thessalonians chapter five. Okay, First Thessalonians chapter five. See, he's going to come in peaceably, and he's going to pretend that he loves his own people because he's going to be a Jew himself. And I believe to this day still that he's going to go after the sons of Ishmael, you Muslims. And like I said, uh, what, 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 what nation is that? Um, I just said it. Afghanistan now has a, the Taliban, a Muslim um, government now. It, it was Muslim before, but being set up now, the Afghanistan with the Taliban. And Islam was created by Roman Catholicism, a mother, a daughter of her mother. Okay. But see, we're seeing prophecy fulfilled today and in in being prepared for we when we, the church of the living God, are taken out of here. 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 1 under verse 5. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, those of the church of the living God, new creatures in Christ, ye have no need that I write unto you. For, years, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness, as these coadjutors, and as most of these people are. When they say peace and safety. All this stuff that the Jesuits have instituted. What is the guise? What is the premise for your peace and safety? We need 
peace and safety. Are not people out right now looking for a savior to come? And here in America, they're going to uh, pull it up, puff it up with Trump coming back. Okay? It's being set up before our eyes, brethren. We know this. You lost people, you need to wake up now. Okay? Now go back to Daniel chapter 11. Let's read on to verses 28 on to verse 35 now. Very interesting stuff here. Daniel chapter uh, 11 verses 28 on to verse 35. Okay? Then shall he return into his land with great riches, and his heart shall be against the holy covenant, and he shall do exploits and return to his own land. At the time appointed he shall return and come toward the south, but it shall not be as the former or as the latter. Now, look at verse, looking at verses 28 and verse 29. Okay? Then shall he return in, into, the, into his land with great riches, okay? And his heart shall be against the holy covenant, okay? They're going to make a league with that man of sin, the son of perdition. To build the, the third temple or whatever it is, okay, they're going to make a league with him, okay? But then he's going to turn and be against it. His heart is going to be stirred to do what? To go against that, as we're reading. And also here in verse 29, okay, at, that at the time appointed he shall return and come toward the south, but it shall not be as the former or as the latter. For the ships of Kittim shall come against him. So, a naval battle, a naval battle of some sort, okay? Therefore he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the Holy Covenant. So shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the Holy Covenant. So, verse 30 denotes some kind of military action, right? Uh, for the ships of of Kittim shall come against him, therefore he shall be grieved and return. Okay? Verse 31, An arm shall stand on his part, arms and army, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, the third rebuilt temple, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, okay, the, um, the sacrificial system of animals, the red heifer, which they they got in Israel right now. The uh, laws, the um, the Mosaic laws, the Levitical laws. Okay, he's coming in peaceably. He's going to be a Jew. He's going to allow his people, the Jews, to do these things to reestablish the law. Okay. Okay, that's good. Yes, the law is coming back during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay? Yes, it is. Okay? Verse 31 again. And arm shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall, and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. The abomination that maketh desolate. Um, and also, I, 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 I can't remember offhand, but um, the abomination that maketh desolate, that is a title of what? Of who? That man of sin, the son of perdition. The abomination that maketh desolate. They shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. Okay? That's that man of sin, the son of perdition. So somewhere in here, we see some kind of military action, don't we? That's going to come into play a little bit later. Don't worry about it. Don't you worry about that. We'll, we'll get to that, okay? Remember this. Let's continue. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. Oh, maybe by saying he's God. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Verse 32 I believe denotes the difference between the Jews when they realize because in verse 31 they are going to place the abomination that maketh 
desolate. That man of sin, the son of perdition, he's going to go, and we're going to look at this. He's going to go in and say, here I am. Okay? And look at verse 32. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. Okay? Those Jews that are going to go along. And, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Those Jews, when they see the abomination of desolation set up in the holy place, standing where he ought not, we're going to look at that, there are going to be Jews then that are going to be like, they were telling us the truth. All those authorized version of the scripture believers, they were telling us the truth. That's the son of perdition. Oy vey. If there ever was a chance, uh, time to say, oy vey. Look at verse 32. I personally, I, I personally believe that's what it denotes. I personally do believe that. There are going to be Jews that are going to go along with the, the son of perdition. Okay? But there are going to be Jews that are going to get it. Then, they're going to be going to the book of Hebrews, the book of James. Okay? Verse 32. Verses 31 and verse 32. That change. What brings about that change, though? That's We're going to get to that. You're going to find this very interesting when we get there, okay? So let's continue, okay? And they that understand among the people shall instruct many. Yet they shall fall by the sword and by famine, by captivity, and by spoil many days. See, verse 33 is denoting too once the Jews realize also don't let us not forget the two olive branches that pour out that golden oil otherwise known as the two witnesses we're going to touch on that as well okay but again there's going to be these Jews that get it and wake up and like verses uh like verse 31 uh verse 33 here and verse 34 on on uh, actually on to verse 35 okay denotes that once these Jews w wake up and get that that's the son of perdition that they've messed up that Jesus is truly their Messiah what will be the fulfilling of them be but life from the dead okay now when they shall fall they shall be hoping with a little help but many shall cleave to them with flatteries and some of them of understanding shall fall to try them and to purge and to make them white, even to the time of the end, because it is yet for an appointed time. Go to Daniel chapter 12, verses 2 and 3. Daniel 12, verses 2 and 3. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Okay? And verse 10. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And verse 10 specifically, during that time of Jacob's trouble, the wicked, verse 32, uh, in Daniel 11. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries, okay? But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Verse 10 in Daniel chapter 12. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, okay? But the wicked shall do wickedly. And none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Okay, now Revelation chapter 21, Revelation chapter 21, Revelation chapter 21, oh, excuse me, uh, Revelation chapter 22, Verses, verse 11, okay? Or was it uh, verses 1 and 2, verse 11? 
No, verse 11. Okay? He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Okay? During the time of Jacob's trouble, once the Jews get it, we are looking at that there are some that are going to side with that son of, that man of sin, the son of perdition, and there are some that are going to understand that Jesus is their true God, their Father, their Messiah, that they've been wrong all along. Well, once the once they get that, what is going to be what is it going to be onto them but life from the dead? Okay? Once the Jews realize that, not the ones that have given themselves over to that man of sin, the son of perdition. It's going to be life from the dead. But now, let's continue this in uh, Daniel chapter 11, verses 36 on to the close of the chapter. Okay? Now remember, from verses 28 on to verse 35, in verse 30, the ships of Kittim shall come against him. And there's going to be some kind of military thing. Also in verses 31 on to verse 32, when he, that man of sin, the son of perdition, the abomination that make it desolate, gets set up, steps in, it's like, here I am, I am God, okay? There's going to be some military kind of stuff going on. Remember that. But let's continue. Verse 36 unto the close of the chapter. And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, and shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. For that that is determined shall be done. Now, in verse uh, 28, you see that his heart is changed, and his heart shall be against the Holy Covenant. But then you see in verse 31 that they set up the abomination that make it desolate. And here in verse 36, you see that he is magnifying himself above every god, little g, and shall speak marvelous things against the god, big g, of gods, little g. Okay? Verse 37. Again, that man of sin, the son of perdition, he's going to be a Jew. Neither shall he regard the god of his fathers, nor the desire of women. Does that mean he's going to be a sodomite? Or a celibate priest. Or a celibate. Because think about it. Uh, when Jesus, God our Father, walked on the earth, unlike what that satanic Da Vinci Code thing says, that uh, was it the Da Vinci Code? Something like that that said that Jesus married Mary Magdalene? Satanic blasphemy nonsense. But think about it like this. That man of sin, the son of perdition, the abomination that maketh desolate, he's a counterfeit. Jesus, God our Father, God manifest in the flesh, he did not have the desire of women. He was celibate. Is this, does this mean he's going to be a sodomite? It's possible. But you got to remember... The son of perdition, okay, he is going to be a perfect looking counterfeit of what they think Jesus is. He's going to look like the Roman Catholic Jesus. And remember, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father in the scriptures, he never was with a woman. So rather, when it says here, neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, he's going to be a Jew, nor the desire of women. I am more leaning to still that it's going to be a celibacy thing. Whether it's because he's a pope or because he's going to look like the Catholic Jesus and Jesus of the scriptures never was with a woman. Nor regard any God for he shall magnify himself above all but in his estate shall he honor the God of forces, 
and a God whom his fathers knew not, shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange God, whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory, and he shall cause them to rule over many, and shall divide the land for gain. And at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him, and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind, with chariots, and with horsemen, and with many ships, and he shall enter into the countries, and shall overflow and pass over. He shall enter also into the glorious land, and many countries shall be overthrown, but these shall escape out of his hand. Edom, even Edom, Esau, the brother of Jacob. Okay? And Moab and the chief of the children of Ammon. Moab and Ammon, the children of Lot, born through the incestuous relationship between Lot and his daughters. Lot was the nephew of Abraham. Okay? that he shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries and the land of Egypt shall not escape Egypt likened unto a type of the world okay but he shall have power over the treasures of gold and of silver yeah and over the precious things of Egypt the things of the world and the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. Look at verse 43. Remember in the book of James where it says your gold and your silver? Uh, 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 let's go there. Hold your place here. Go to the book of James. Go to the book of James. See, you got these people nowadays because the economy here in America, the dollar will collapse eventually. And everybody is saying, gold and silver, gold and silver, gold and silver. Gold and silver during the time of Jacob's trouble is going to mean nothing, okay? Uh, let's see. Uh, James chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 3, okay? The book of James is written for or written to the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Check this out. James chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 3. Go to now, ye rich men. Weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you. How can gold and silver rust? They don't rust. What does that mean? That means that they will be useless during the time of Jacob's trouble. You, you got the people today. It's like gold and silver, gold and silver. Okay, how are you going to take a bar of gold to a grocery store when the Jesuits institute the famine here? How are you going to barter a bar of gold today for a loaf of bread? Even so, more, more so in the time of Jacob's trouble? Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Go back to Daniel chapter 11, verse 43, talking about the son of perdition. But he shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver. Gold and silver are going to mean nothing during the time of Jacob's trouble, especially when they implement the mark of the beast. Gold and silver during the time of Jacob's trouble will mean nothing. You're looking at it. He's going to have power over the treasures of gold and silver. Who? That man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? And over all the precious things of Egypt, over all the precious things of the world. Okay? And the Libyans and the Ethiopians, Ethiopians, Hamites, shall be at his steps. Is verse 43 a reference onto the mark of the beast? Sure does look like it, don't it? Let's continue. But tiding out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Oh, because America's going to rise again. Shut up. 
Therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy, and utterly to make away many. And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end, and none shall help him. How can anyone help that man of sin, the son of perdition? Because he's fighting against God. And God himself, our Lord Jesus Christ, is going to put him away. Daniel chapter 12, verse 11. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, okay, okay, verse 31, okay, an arm shall on his, an arm shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, the uh, third rebuilt temple, where the, because the law is going to be reestablished during the time of Jacob's trouble, okay, and they shall place the abomination that make it desolate. Verse 11 in Daniel 12. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that make it desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Um, three and a half years. So, that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to come in midway during the time of Jacob's trouble. That's when that mark of the beast is going to be set up. Okay. Now, go to John chapter 6. John chapter 6, verses 64 on to verse 71. John chapter 6, verses 64 on to verse 71. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who should be, be and who should betray them. Okay, hold on one second, brethren. Sorry about that, brethren. I had to find this very quick. Okay, verse sixty-four in John six. But they, but there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who should betray him. This is, by the way, before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay, still doctrinally in the Old Testament. But 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 16 on to verse 19. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness, and their word will eat as doth the canker, of whom is Hymenius and Philetus, <laughs> who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, and no other foundation can any man lay than that is laid, and that is Jesus Christ, okay? Not uh, Peter, like the Catholics like you to believe, okay? Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Everyone has a seal who is born again converted of the church of the living God who is a new creature. You're saved, you're sealed unto the day of redemption. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Yes, God knows your heart and it's evil and wicked. You don't belong to him. You're not saved. Yes. Yes. Congratulations. God knows your heart. Good for you. What is that, brother? Uh, in Jeremiah 17, verses 9 and 10? Let's continue in John chapter 6. And he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me except it were given unto, unto him from my father. From that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. You know, that's the way it is. When these Christians realize that, you know, you're supposed to be a new creature, not just have a mere changed life, and that God is a God who requires. A lot of people, once they realize that he's um, not this, you know, bro hug, little sappy, you know, give high five Jesus, but he is a God who requires. 
A lot of people like to abandon him. They were never his to begin with. Isn't that right, buddy, huh? Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye go away also? Then Shimon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Where are you going to go? You're going to go to the Catholic system? Good luck. You're going to go to yourself? Just believe. Right? Good luck. No. Where are you going to go? Without Jesus, you're, you have no hope. Without grace by faith, you know, through faith, excuse me. Grace through faith, excuse me. Um, without our Lord's salvation, you have no hope. Where are you going to go? <laughs> Where are you going to go? There's only one way. What are you going to do? Verse 69. Oh, let's read verse 68 again. Then Chief Mon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve? And one of you is a devil. He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Shimon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. Hmm. Now that man of sin, the son of perdition, he's going to be a Jew. Absolutely, no doubt about it. Have I not chose you twelve, and one of you is a devil? Meaning, one of his own. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Salvation is of the Jew, not of the Roman Catholic Church. Okay? Very interesting. And one of you is a devil. And that man of sin, the son of perdition, first three and a half years, it's not going to be peaceful. He's going to go forth conquering and to conquer. There's going to be a lot of war, a lot of bloodshed, and all the spoil from that, and he's going to divide unto his own people, the Jew. But he's a devil. And then something happens. Something happens during that to, uh, to this man of sin, the son of perdition. Luke 22. Luke 22. Verses 1 on to verse 6. Now, the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. Then Satan entered. More on that in a minute, okay? And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him unto them. And they were glad and covenanted to give him money and promised and sought opportunity to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude. Look at verse 3. Jesus said, Have I not chose you twelve? And one of you is a devil. Speaking of Judas Iscariot. That man of sin, the son of perdition. He's going to be a Jew. Okay? He came onto his own. Okay? Our Lord, the, the salvation is of the Jew. He came onto his own and his own received him not. Okay? So that man of sin, in order to fool the Jews, he's going to be Jewish. Okay? He's going to be a Jew. Because the Jews will not accept the Gentile Messiah. Okay? Okay? But, go to John chapter 13 now. Note verse 3. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot. Then entered him. At first he was just a regular old devil, I guess. But then, something happened where Satan actually entered into Judas. John chapter 13. John chapter 13, verses 21 on to verse 27. 
John chapter 13, verses 21 on to verse 27. When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Shimon Peter therefore beckoned to him that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. He then lying on Jesus' breast saith unto him, Lord, who is it? Get a load of this. Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop. S-O-P. Son of perdition. When I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Shimon. And after the sop, Satan entered in to him. Then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest, do quickly. So, Satan actually entered. Jesus said, Have I not chosen you twelve? And one of you is a devil, speaking of Judas Iscariot. He was a devil. But Satan entered into him when? Okay? He says here, Jesus, verse 26, Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop, S-O-P, it's not coinky dank when I have dipped it. And when he has had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Shimon. After the sop, and after the sop, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest too quickly. And go back to Luke 22. Okay? Come on. Go back to Luke 22. Verse 3. Then entered Satan into Judas Iscariot. Uh, then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. And look at John chapter 17, verse 12. John 17, verse 12. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but... The son of perdition, SOP, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Son of perdition. And that sop was given on to Judas, and then Satan entered into Judas. Second Thessalonians chapter two. Second Thessalonians chapter two. Okay? 2 Thessalonians, covered this before, we're, co we're covering it again. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3, under verse 12, okay? Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, uh, falling away. Those who said they are saved, but they proved themselves not to be. What is that? 1 John chapter 2, 1 John chapter 2. Okay? The falling away is not talking about, yes, it can happen. The falling away is not talking about those of the church of the living God who get messed up. No. The falling away is this. 1 John chapter 2, verses 18 on to verse 20. Little children, it is the last time. And at 1 John 2, verses 18 on to verse 20. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come. And now are there many Antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time. Yeah, look outside the door, buddy. Okay, look online. Yeah, there are many Antichrists. Yes. They went out from us, 
but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. That's the falling away. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. That seal, that circumcision made without hands. Okay? The Lord Himself, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit. You know our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, dwelling within the saved, born again, converted of the Church of the Living God, who is a new creature. Okay? That's the falling away. The unction is the seal of the Holy Ghost, our Lord Jesus Christ, God Himself. Okay? Go back to 2 Thessalonians. Let no man deceive you, picking up at verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. That man of sin, the son of perdition. Now, I've heard people say, well, there's going to be two of them. It's one man. But something happens to this one man. Judas at first, he was, he said, is not one of you a devil? But he received the sop and then Satan into him, uh, then Satan entered into him. Only then, when Jesus dipped that sop and gave it to Judas, and when Judas took it, then Satan entered into him. But all the while at first he was just, he was a devil. But then Satan came into him. Hmm. That man of sin, the son of perdition, not two people, one person. Is it possible that this, this man of sin, the son of perdition, get a load of this. Is it possible that he has a changed life? Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, the third rebuilt temple, shewing himself that he is God. Hold your place here. Go back to Daniel chapter 11. Daniel chapter 11, verse 30. Uh, uh, verse 36, excuse me. Daniel chapter 11, verse 36. And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, and shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. For that that is determined shall be done. Okay? Go back to Second Thessalonians. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he, church of the living God, be taken out of the way. Okay? Then, okay? For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Right now there are many antichrists. Okay? Only he who now letteth, let is hinder. Who's that he? Our Lord Jesus Christ within the church of the living God. Until he, the body of Christ, the church of the living God, be taken out of the way. We are his ambassadors. Remember 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 on to verse 21. We are ambassadors for Christ. We have the ministry of reconciliation, having the word of reconciliation. Okay? Once we are taken out of the way, and then shall that wicked be revealed. We get taken up, then that wicked shall be revealed. We are not going to see that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? That wicked is referring to who? That man of sin, the son of perdition. That's who that is. In verse 8, And then shall that wicked be revealed, 
whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, second coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. Hold your place here again. Go back to Daniel chapter 11. Okay? Go back to Daniel chapter, not Micah, Daniel chapter 11. Okay? Okay? Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. Uh, let's read verses 31 and 32. An arm shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that make it desolate. That's that man of sin, the son of perdition. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries, lying signs and wonders, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Verse 11 in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion. This is written for us today. Absolutely. Absolutely. But there is also stuff that adheres onto this because he's talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. This is for us today. This is doctrine for us today. This applies for us today. Do you get it? Okay? There are those out there who have not received the love of the truth. They have made their choice, these Jesuit coadjutors. They have gone. They're gone. The Lord can save them, but they're choosing to serve Satan. They've made their choice. They cannot be saved. Okay. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should be alive. That you save yourself by your own belief. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. Every single one of you easy believism heretics. Excuse me. That's you. You have pleasure in unrighteousness. Yeah, big smile there, buddy boy. Yeah. Yeah. But we, uh, no, that was what we were to read to. Okay? And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in, un, had pleasure in unrighteousness. So we get caught up, and then that wicked be revealed, that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? Is that man of sin, the son of perdition, going to be actually, literally, Judas Iscariot? Now we see that Satan entered into Judas Iscariot after the Sop, the son of perdition. And we see here in uh, 2 Thessalonians that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Okay? But is this man of sin, the son of perdition, is he going to be actually Judas Iscariot? I don't know. Because this we do know. It's two witnesses. Okay? Go to Zechariah chapter 4. This is what my, uh, my beloved brother asked me. And, to be, and I'm going to tell you, I don't know. I don't know. But we have something we have to consider about this, okay? Zechariah chapter 4. Zechariah chapter 4, verses 3 under the on to the close of the chapter. Let's consider this. Zechariah chapter 4. Now let's read the whole chapter. Can you handle it? And the angel that talked with me came again. And waked me as a man that is wakened out of his sleep, and said unto me, What seest thou? And I, and I said, I have looked. And behold, a candlestick all of gold, with a bowl upon the top of it, and his seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps, 
which are upon the top of it. Uh, the menorah, I believe this is referring to. And two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl and the other upon the left side thereof. Okay? The right side and the left side. Two. So I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain? Mountain denoting a person there, right? a person, okay? Who art thou, O great mountain? Okay? Before Zerubbabel, thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hand shall also finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. For who hath despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice, and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel, with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro through the whole earth. Then answered I, and said unto him, What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick, and upon the left side thereof? And I answered again, and said unto him, What be these two olive branches which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? And he answered me and said, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then said he, These are the two anointed ones that stand before by the Lord of the whole earth. Two anointed ones. Hmm. Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 under verse 8. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias, talking with them. Moses and Elias, Moses and Elijah, the two witnesses. There are some out there who like to tell you that the two witnesses are Elijah and Enoch, because Elijah was taken up in a whirlwind. He did not see death. Um, Enoch was uh, was was there and then he was not for God took him Enoch did not see death so people want uh, some out there say that the two witnesses are Elijah and Enoch no it's Moses and Elijah if you've ever been to a Passover dinner a Seder dinner um, they're reciting what the Exodus the Jew holds Moses and Elijah in high regard the Jew is going to need Moses and Elijah during the time of Jacob's trouble to recite unto them the truth that, hey, Jesus is their Messiah. Okay? It's not Enoch. Okay? At the, uh, at the, toward the end of the Seder feast, they have the two cups, the cup of Elijah and the cup of Miriam. Okay? We won't get into the cup of Miriam. Okay? But they have the cup of Elijah and they open up the door uh, for the cup of Elijah at the end of the uh, Passover dinner, hoping that Elijah will come in and sit at the table, okay? Two witnesses are Moses and Elijah. The law of Moses, okay? The law of Moses is going to return, okay? The law is going to return during the time of Jacob's trouble. And Elijah, okay, uh, the spirit of Elijah, if I can remember that, I'll, I'll link that video in, this, uh, in the description of this, okay? The spirit of Elijah. Moses and Elijah themselves personally are going to return. Remember, Satan argued with um, um, 
Michael the Archangel, you read about that in Jude, uh, argue with uh, Mo uh, Michael and Satan argue about the body of Moses. Dispute. Because Satan wanted the body of Moses. Okay? And to this day, nobody knows where Moses is buried. Moses is going to be one of the two witnesses that come back. Okay? It's Moses and Elijah. Because the Jews are going to need to see... The Jews require a sign. They're going to need Moses and Elijah. You and I today in this dispensation, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Okay? We don't need Moses and Elijah. The Jews do. Verse 3. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah, Elias, excuse me, talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. And it is from that verse where they have re derived the Jesus only thing. But Jesus only. One God comprised of what? Spirit, the Holy Ghost, soul, God the Father, body. The Word made in the likeness of sinful flesh. Spirit, soul, and body. One God. Jesus only. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So what? So what does this mean? What does this mean? This is also echoed in Mark chapter nine, verses two on to verse ten, and Luke chapter nine, verses twenty-eight on to verse thirty-six. Okay. Moses and Elijah themselves are going to be appearing again during the time of Jacob's trouble. Revelation chapter eleven. Revelation chapter eleven. Remember, that man of sin, the son of perdition, he is going to look like the Roman Catholic Jesus. He is going to be a counterfeit. Okay? Lying signs and wonders. Okay? And like the and likened unto the magicians of Egypt, they were able to mimic, uh, imitate, copy some of what the Lord does only unto a point. Okay? He's going to be a counterfeit. He's going to be an imitation. Okay? So, this question. Is Judas Iscariot himself going to be that man of sin, the son of perdition? Uh, likened unto Judas? Absolutely. But of course. But, remembering, Satan is a counterfeit. Revelation chapter 11. Verses 1 under verse 12. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple, leave it out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, Moses and Elijah. And they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days, clothed in sackcloth. Who are they prophesying unto? The Jews. If there are going to be Gentiles saved during the time of Jacob's trouble, I personally believe it's going to be the ones in Revelation chapter 7 of that multitude that get saved right away and die right away, like these easy believism people who realize that they've been lied to. Okay? And maybe some Muslims. Who knows? Okay, but... The two witnesses, specifically, they're witnessing unto the Jews. Okay? These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. 
And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. Now check this out. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. Just like Elijah. Okay, everybody pretty much is on agreement that it's Elijah. One of them is Elijah. It's Moses. That's going to be the second one. You have these guys who like to attribute the book of Enoch as being scripture. Okay. That's where the argument comes in. It's Moses. Okay. But. And have power over waters to turn them to blood. And to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. So Elijah called down fire upon the earth and it did not rain in the time of his prophecy right and who was it who turned water to blood and smote the earth with all the plagues people the two witnesses are Moses and Elijah it's not Elijah and Enoch it's Moses and Elijah okay and when they shall have finished their testimony the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people, and kindreds, and tongues, and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. Get a load of this! And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another. Oh, like Christ Mass? Could it be possible that these that Moses and Elijah will be killed during the satanic pagan Christ Mass? I don't know. Because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven, saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. So, Moses and Elijah are going to be taken back up into heaven. This two raptures thing, no, no. There are not two raptures, okay? Uh, there's one catching away, okay? Yeah, there's only one catching away. There are definitely not two raptures, okay? Why do we look at this? Very simple. Satan is a counterfeit. Is it going to be actually Judas Iscariot who's going to come back as that man of sin, the son of perdition? I don't know. Is it possible? I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes. Is it possible? Satan's a counterfeit. Okay? God's going to bring back Actually, the actual Moses, the actual Elijah. Okay? He's going to. Um, will Satan, as a copycat, as an imitation, as a counterfeit, bring back the actual Judas Iscariot? I don't know. Is it possible? I believe it is possible. I don't know, brother. But that's a very good question. Now, let's go to Revelation chapter 6. While we're here in Revelation, we're here we're going to be spending the majority of our time. Revelation chapter 6, verses 1 and verse 2. Okay? Now, you and I, Church of the Living God, we know this, we're caught up in Revelation 4, verse 1. Okay? And Revelation 6, verses 1 and 2. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals... And I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, 
And he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. A bow with no arrows. He comes in peaceably and obtains the kingdom by flatteries? A vile person? Okay? And of course, this is a counterfeit to our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, Revelation chapter 19, that man of sin, the son of perdition, has a, a bow, no arrows. He comes in peaceably. He obtains the kingdom by flatteries. He makes others do his dirty work. Okay? Revelation 19, verses 11 on to verse 16. Here's the real deal. The second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called... Faithful and true, capital F, capital T. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his heads were many crowns, where that man of sin, the son of perdition, only has one, okay? And he had a name written that no man knew but, him, but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture, an article of clothing, dipped in blood, and his name is called the capital W Word of God. The Word made flesh. One of seven appearances of the Word of God. Every time you see a capital W Word of God, seven times, it's talking about our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? Let's continue. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. That's us. That's us. The church of the living God. His body. We come down with him. Okay? And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. A sword shall be on their chariots. Out of his mouth. He's speaking the word. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he shall smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness of and wrath of Almighty God. A sword. He speaks. The Word made flesh. He speaks. That's it. Okay? Okay? Verse 16. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. That's our Lord Jesus Christ God. Now, let's go to Revelation chapter 13. Okay? Revelation chapter 13. Now, Revelation chapter 12. I have a video on that. Um, I, I, I uh, uh, one second, brethren. Sorry about that, brethren. I, I had to write this down. I have an expository video on Revelation chapter 12 which was a correction, uh, I made an error, I think it was uh, in an expository video on uh, Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Um, but I'm going to try to, li I'll link that in the description box. Revelation chapter 12, Satan is cast down onto the earth. Okay? And he's going after who? The Jews. Now during this time, that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going forth conquering and to conquer, okay? And we've already looked at that in Daniel. But in Revelation 12, Satan gets cast down to the earth, and he is uh, angry because he knows that he hath but a short time, okay? Uh, where is that? Uh, where he says, ah, verse 12, in Revelation 12, Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Literal. Short time, like what? Oh, three and a half years. What do you mean? Have I not chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? That man of sin, the son of perdition, one of you is a devil. Judas Iscariot from the very beginning was a devil. But when did Satan enter him? Satan physically came into him 
when he received the sign. And Revelation 12, Satan's on the earth. Revelation 13. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. The name of blasphemy. Heads, plural. The name of blasphemy. Singular. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads, as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. He had a wound, okay? The, uh, the devil, the dragon gave him his power. The devil empowered him. But he had a wound and was healed. Came back to life, okay? Remember in Daniel, hold your place here. Go back now to Daniel chapter 11. Uh, I, I, you know, we are not going to understand, brethren, the book of Revelation in its entirety. Instruction and in righteousness is definitely there. Yes, absolutely. But it's not written to us. Okay? It's not written to us. You and I, we're not going to be here. We're not going to understand it. I mean, we can have understanding of it in uh, instruction and in righteousness, but that is for those who are going to be there during that time period, which you and I have the church of the living God or not. Okay? you got to remember that. But Daniel chapter 11, if I ever get there, okay? Daniel chapter 11, okay? Verses 28 down to verse 30. Remember on to verse 35, okay? Remember verse 28 in Daniel chapter 11. Then shall he return into his land with great riches, and his heart shall be against the holy covenant, and he shall do exploits and return unto his own land. At the time appointed... At the time appointed, he shall return and come toward the south, but it shall not be as the former or as the latter. Military. For the ships of Kittim shall come against him. Therefore he shall be grieved, and return and have indignation against the Holy Covenant. And so shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the Holy Covenant. Verse 31. And arms shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that make it desolate. What I believe in Daniel chapter 11, from verses 28 uh, on to verse 35, on the, uh, uh, at the very least, there's some kind of military action, some kind of war, a naval battle of some sort. I am being, I am being persuaded that during that time, that man of sin is going to be wounded. Then he's going to come back to life. Why? Satan is going to enter into him then. See, that man of sin, he's going to be a devil. Absolutely. The dragon is giving him his power. But once he gets wounded, he comes back to life. How? Oh, remember, he's going to be a counterfeit. The spirit enters into him and he stands upon his feet you get what I'm, you, you get where we're going with this let's continue in revelation 13 uh, picking up at verse 3 again and I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed and all the world wondered after the beast yeah because he came back to life because that Antichrist spirit, the devil himself, entered into him. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? They're worshipping Satan, because Satan is going to be bodily and dwelt in this man, I believe. I used to, I you know, I always thought that Right away, that's that man of sin, the son of perdition. 
that Satan is going to be in that man from the very beginning. Uh, when our Lord opens up the seals and lets him go. I don't believe that anymore. I don't. Why? Through the scripture. Okay? Yes, I'm changing my uh, stand on that because of the scripture. Okay? I am being persuaded, brethren, that man of sin, the son of perdition, that the, the son of perdition, he's going to come first as the man of sin. The wicked will be revealed. Something happens. He gets wounded. Then he comes back to life. The son of perdition. Satan himself is going to be indwelt in him. Okay? Let's continue. Verse 4. Oh, we already read verse 4. Verse 5. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Forty and two months. Three and a half years. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations given unto him, allowed to do so. And all that dwell upon earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. I'll link the uh, three books video in this as well. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity, let him go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. How does a dragon speak? Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits, okay? And he exerciseth all the power of the first beasts before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. The first beast, the man in whom Satan is indwelling. Remember, your satanic trinity is going to be on the earth. Absolutely it is going to be on the earth. The dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. This is describing the false prophet who's going to be pointing everyone to the son of perdition who received a wound and was healed, I believe, after Satan came into him and brought him back to life. See? Let's continue. And he doth great wonders so that he make fire come down from heaven on the earth in, sight, in the sight of men. Kind of like what Elijah did. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Lying signs and wonders. Saying to them that, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause <coughs> that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all. This, right here what we're about to read, is what all this, with the steel of the Jesuit punyard, and everything going on today, what is going on today is what is preparing you for this right here. This right here today is preparation for what we're about to read. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Today, they're slowly implementing that you won't be able to work unless you roll it up and get the steel of the Jesuit poniard. Okay? Won't be able to work, make a living. Okay? You can't go into places. Um, they're, they're slowly instituting the muzzle 
um, mandate again. Even those that have received the steel of the Jesuit poniard. All preparing you for this. Okay? Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Six, 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 which equates in ancient Hebrew or Greek www the world wide web and with the what is, what is that called again with the um, vmat2 inhibitors graphene oxide messenger ribose small ribose whatever nucleic amino acid mrna MR, mrc5 aborted children and toxins and spike proteins it's all preparing you here is and the number 666 when they turn on the 5G you yourself you're going to be the transistor you will be the uh, power surge a shock to the system, you devils of fear factory, you, you and your wicked music, Mr. Burton C. Bell, you wicked devil. Hi. That's what this is all about, people. This is what they're preparing you for. In Revelation 14 now, verses 1 on to verse 12. What happens when you take that mark of the beast? Because you won't be able to buy or sell. The, that man of sin, the son of perdition, he's going forth conquering and, and conquer. And in his wake, he's going to leave devastation. Then during that somewhere, he's going to get wounded. I am believing, I am being persuaded that Satan is going to enter into him then. Then he's going to go in and say, here I am. And then he into, institutes the mark of the beast. Which that mark of the beast, which that, um, what is that, that uh, VMAT2 inhibitors, Funvax, that makes you chemically God resistant? Revelation 14, verses 1 on to verse 12. And I looked, and lo, Lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him an hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters. There again, waters like in on the people. And as the voice of great of a great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. Those are the only ones who are sealed during the time of Jacob's trouble. 144,000 Jews. Okay? Not because you have eternal security in this time. No. You take them, you'll see. Let's continue. These are they which were not defiled with women, virgins, for they are virgins. I'll shut up and let the scripture talk. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. First fruits in this dispensation, the time of Jacob's trouble. It's not a contradiction where in the Pauline epistles, for this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, there is no contradiction where it says we are the first fruits unto Christ. No, it's in that dispensation. First fruits in this dispensation, the time of Jacob's trouble. It's not a contradiction, okay? The first fruits during this dispensation, the time of the uh, the time of the Gentiles, first fruits in the coming dispensation, the time of Jacob's trouble. Different dispensations. You gotta rightly divide the word of truth, people. Okay? Let's continue. 
And I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. What is that everlasting gospel? The gospel of the kingdom of heaven. The gospel of by grace through faith ends when we get redeemed. And see all these disgusting, pervert, disgusting, vile, Jesuit coadjutor, easy believism devils. They're telling you that the gospel, that this everlasting gospel is just believe, eternal security. It's a lie, people. It's a lie. It's going to be, what is that everlasting gospel? The kingdom of heaven. Uh, is the kingdom of heaven ever going to end? Huh? Oh, he lets out Satan at the end of the thousand years. Yes, yes. And then Satan and all his guys are finally defeated. And then the seventh and final dispensation, eternal eternity happens. Okay? Yes. But that everlasting gospel is what gospel? The gospel of the kingdom of heaven. Not the gospel that we preach today. People, listen to me. Listen to me. Okay. If you make it this far, please listen to me. These easy believers and devils that are they claim to be dispensational, but they say it's faith alone from Genesis onto Revelation. People, they're lying to you. Do not believe them. They are lost, satanic, Jesuit devils. They're lying to you. They're lying to you. Please understand that. Please understand that. Okay? You wicked, scumbag, pervert devil. You're going to pay for what you're doing. The, the ones that get killed right away during the time of Jacob's trouble, hopefully those are the ones that wake up from your nonsense. Hopefully. I don't know. Because we're not going to be there. You are. So keep smiling there, buddy boy. Verse 7. Saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him. For the hour of His judgment has come. And worship Him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen that great city. Because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Roman Catholicism. The Vatican. That's what this is talking about. Okay? And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man, any man, like it says in, uh, what is that, um, uh, uh, what is that? First Corinthians chapter six, I believe that is, where it says, "If any man defile the temple of God, him will God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are." Okay. If any man, uh, uh, no distinction there. If any man defile the temple of God, saved and lost. If any man worship the beast and his image, how do you worship the beast and his image? And receive his mark in his forehead or, or in his hand. You take the mark. You're worshiping the beast. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. Which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone. In the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Tormented. Okay, not soul annihilationism like Bullinger teaches, like these stupid Jehos teach. Okay? The smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. Forever and ever. Everlasting torment. Some will uh, arise to everlasting life and some to everlasting shame and contempt. Which is written for this time. What that's talking about in Daniel chapter 12. Okay. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night. Where their worm dieth not. And the fire is not quenched. In hell. 
to be eventually in the lake of fire, okay? Going to burn forever. Who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Whosoever. Any man, okay? It says right there. Uh, where was that? Uh, any man, in verse 9, if any man worship the beast, you take that mark in your hand or in your forehead. Whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. No distinction there. Um, what does that mean? There is no sec eternal security during the time of Jacob's trouble. Only for those 144,000 sealed Jews. If you take the mark of the beast, you're going to go to hell and burn forever. People. 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 You take the mark of the beast. Okay. That whatever VMAT2 thing. Okay. That's in going to be in the delivery system of the mark of the beast. Okay. Surgery. Uh, impl uh, whether it's a steel of the Jesuit poniard or a surgery that they put it in there. Whatever. Okay. That's going to be part of it. Your mind is going to be permanently altered. You're going to become a genetically modified organism. You're going to go to hell. And you're going to burn forever and ever. Do you understand that? These people, these devils, telling you just believe. In that time period. Besides, in that time period, it's going to be a rabid uh, Roman Catholicism. The one world religion, the one world government, the dark ages, okay, ruled by Roman Catholicism. And that man is sin, the son of perdition. One guy, okay, one guy, one man, who's a devil, absolutely. But then he gets an injury, or he, he gets killed, and then comes back to life. Why? I believe now because Satan enters into him. See. You take the steel of the Jesuit Punyard today because of the religion of the poison crown. You can still get saved. I believe that. There are others who say, no, you can't. It's not the mark of the beast. You're not going to hell. But once we get out of here, and that man of sin, the son of perdition, Satan himself, the son of perdition, Remember, because Jesus said of Judas Iscariot that I've lost none except the son of perdition and the sop, okay? Judas became that son of perdition after he received the sop, after Satan came into him. You take that mark, th this is all preparing you for it. You take that mark of the beast, you're going to hell. You can't cut your hand off or gouge it out, you're done. The minute that's in your hand or in your forehead, you're worshiping the beast. You're worshiping Satan. And during the time of Jacob's trouble, it's an endurance. <laughs> you do have to persevere until the end. You can't take the mark of the beast. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that Keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Faith and works during the time of Jacob's trouble. You got these filthy, pathetic devils that tell you it's faith alone from the beginning unto the end, from Genesis unto Revelation. not true but during the time of Jacob's trouble it's faith and works the law is going to return the commandments okay all of this all of it is to get you ready for that man of sin the son of perdition who eventually is going to make you take that mark 
my wife and I, we, we have family. We know many people. So do you. So do you. Right? So do you. We know many people who um, are lost, who have taken the steel of the Jesuit Panyard. And um, they could still be saved. But remember, you take, you, you get the steel of the Jesuit Panyard, you have only, at the most, four to five years left. Is, is that man of sin, the son of perdition, going to actually be Judas Iscariot? I don't know. Is it possible? I believe so. But I don't know the answer to that. And all of this is preparing you. Please consider these things. Please repent of your self-righteousness. Come to our Lord broken and contrite. Those are his conditions for him saving you. And coming to him broken and contrite, the fear of the Lord will come upon you. And in the fear of the Lord, you will call upon his name. You will call upon the name of the Lord and beg him for his mercy. And may he save you. We don't have that much more longer to go, brethren. We really don't. We're seeing it all come to pass before our eyes. Please consider these things, people. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Um, like I said, a brother asked me this, and it's like, well, I know what video you want me to do today. <laughs> um, we, there, Lord willing... Lord has uh, got some videos just lined up, waiting to do them. And uh, they will be coming when he will. Because this isn't done by me. This is what the Lord will have to do. And this is not a one-man show. There are many people that, are, uh, that help, that um, give advice, that um, admonish, that rebuke, correct. This isn't a one-man show. Thank you to all of you who have prayed, who are praying. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know who you are. We love you. And we will see you in the next video.